In today's video, we're going over yet another PlayStation 5 update. This one also relates to the price point, but specifically, it looks like the cooling system is more expensive than usual to avoid heating issues, and that is based off a recent report. Also, some unfortunate news, Ubisoft has confirmed that Beyond Good and Evil 2 won't launch until at least April 2021. Chances are it'll come even later than that, so that is a really big bummer. And Neo 2's content and length has been detailed, so we'll talk that at the end of this video because I am very much excited for Neo 2, yet another PS4 exclusive that looks really good, and I do expect that game to be a home run based on the successes of the first game, based on all the media previews. I think that game has all the potential in the world to be one of the better games of the year. So we'll talk that in a bit, but first of all, PlayStation 5 cooling system is more expensive than usual to avoid heating issues. The PlayStation 4 and PS4 Pro cooling systems aren't particularly anything out of this world, often making the consoles incredibly noisy, even when not running particularly demanding games. I've specifically noticed it with the base PlayStation 4 console running God of War, for example. The console would get quite loud. Sony seems to have acknowledged the issue, making sure this will not happen with the PlayStation 5 console. On a recent report posted on Bloomberg, it has been confirmed that Sony decided to lavish more on the PlayStation 5 cooling system to make sure heat dissipation isn't an issue. Usually, console manufacturers don't spend more than a few dollars per unit, so it seems like Sony is serious about not repeating the same mistakes that they had made for the PlayStation 4. It was really a minor issue and it wasn't like it was a deal breaker of an issue. I mean, you look at the sales numbers of PlayStation 4, obviously it wasn't a big deal, but if you're trying to refine PlayStation and make the best console absolutely possible, I do think that'll just enhance the overall user experience when you are talking about the PlayStation 5. It was specifically noted, quote, most of the components for the console have been locked down, the people said, including the cooling system, which is usually expensive at a few dollars per unit, Typically, companies would spend less than a dollar, but Sony opted to lavish more on making sure heat dissipation from the powerful chips housed inside the console isn't an issue. The PlayStation 5 is, of course, releasing later in 2020, holiday 2020, but not much is known about the system at this point. I imagine that we are going to get some reveal event sometime soon. Earlier this month, Sony launched the official PlayStation 5 website, hinting that the full reveal may still require some time noting. We've begun to share some of the incredible features you can expect from PlayStation 5, but we're not quite ready to fully unveil the next generation of PlayStation. Sign up below to be among the first uh, to receive updates as we announce them, including news on the PlayStation 5 release date, PlayStation 5 price, and the upcoming roster of PlayStation 5 launch games. And that latter portion is what I'm really interested in, the price and the upcoming roster of PlayStation 5 launch games, more so the launch games. I think its price point is going to be $500, and I think what is going to be defining in terms of how many people actually buy the console at launch and what the demand is, is of course the launch lineup. I think there's already going to be an incredible amount of demand, but if you add in some major marquee launch titles uh, for the PlayStation 5, that is going to dr uh, drive demand way up, and I do imagine that come launch time, going off on a little bit of a tangent, but... If you want the PlayStation 5 at launch, this is definitely an item that you pre-order. I don't know if some of you guys are a little bit younger. Maybe you've never picked up a console at launch and you're planning on picking up the PS5 uh, at launch. Let me tell you guys, the PlayStation 4 was an absolute train wreck if you did not pre-order the console. It was very hard for a few months to actually find it. So if you are eager to get a PS5, when pre-orders do go live, whatever that is, I would highly recommend you to go to your local GameStop, go to Amazon, whatever you want to do, and pre-order the console because it is going to be a hot ticket item. I think the PS5 is honestly going to have even more demand than the PS4. Just based on anecdotally my reading of the pulse and the excitement level for next generation, I really think the excitement level is really high. I think people are really excited about the fact that backwards compatibility is probably going to be a thing, and I think people are more invested to PlayStation as a brand than ever before, so if you're specifically wanting a PS5, I do think it's going to be a hot ticket item, and I do think that if you want it right out of the gate, that you should pre-order it. Now, obviously, over the course of a few months, the stock will stabilize, and they'll have a readily available amount of PlayStation 5 units, but for the first few months, I do see it being a little bit more difficult to find. I personally pre-ordered the PlayStation 4 at launch, but I remember just going Going shopping during holiday of 2013, the PlayStation 4 was hard to find. It was not readily available. And even at a time like Black Friday, I remember Black Friday of 2013, they did not put the PlayStation 4 on sale. However, it still sold out really quickly. They got uh, an influx of new shipments and then it sold out like immediately. That's at least from my anecdotal experience. Your guys' experience may have differed, but nonetheless going off on a little bit of a tangent, but the PlayStation 5 cooling system is more expensive than usual to avoid these heating issues. That is going to make for a better user experience. However, that is also an indicator of a higher price point than maybe some of you guys were expecting. 
funding. All right, moving on from that, Ubisoft has confirmed Beyond Good and Evil 2 won't launch until at least April of 2021. What a bummer this is, because I was incredibly excited for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Personally speaking, as far as Ubisoft's whole tray and lineup of games, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is right up there. Even if you want to throw in the next Assassin's Creed, you guys know how I feel about AC these days. Like the games, but not entirely my cup of tea anymore. Watch Dogs Legion looks pretty good. The Rainbow Six title looks pretty good, but Beyond Good and Evil 2, for my money, is on another level, and that's because I played Beyond Good and Evil 1, and that was such a tremendous game. However, during Ubisoft's quarterly earnings call, Chief Executive Officer Yves Gilman confirmed that Beyond Good and Evil 2's anticipated launch is still a long way off. Asked about Beyond Good and Evil 2's development during the Q&A portion of the call, Gilman was shy about providing a clear update. What he did confirm, however, and we covered this in the past, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is not one of the five AAA games Ubisoft plans to launch between September 2020 and March 2021. Some of those games might be uh, Watch Dogs Legion is of course one, uh, Gods and Monsters, you've got Rainbow Six Quarantine, I imagine a new Assassin's Creed is in that lineup as well, and then one other game to round it out. What that uh, other game is, I don't know. I really want a new Splinter Cell, I don't know if that's gonna happen because I've seemingly been calling for one for quite a while, but it is going to be interesting from a Ubisoft standpoint with these five games. Are you going to be of the mindset that do you want to release Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed, uh, the next Assassin's Creed side by side, like right around the same time? Because those are two games that you would think they're big open world games. They are going to kind of compete against each other, but I guess if it is the holiday season, there's going to be a billion games coming out that even if you're releasing two games side by side, you're going to have competition regardless. So maybe even competing with yourself, they're of the mindset that, hey, it's not a big deal. I just remember what happened with Titanfall 2, and I'm a little bit scarred by that. That game got crushed in the sales, and it absolutely deserved to do really well. However, I always point to the fact of the game being released right around the same time as Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Battlefield 1, which was an EA-published title, and uh, Overwatch just came out a few months prior, hurting that game quite a bit. Uh, but Respawn's been able to bounce back, and I don't think it would be the end of the world. But back to Beyond Good and Evil 2, that means that it's still a ways away. At earliest, it would mean April 2021, but if they're not even giving any kind of update, I would imagine it would be even later than that. I imagine that this is going to transition to a PlayStation 5 title. That would make all the sense in the world. And I just hope development is still going along smoothly. To give you guys an idea on how long it's been, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 1 came out all the way back in 2003. So we're talking about playing Beyond Good and Evil 2 in 2021. There are times where you have to wait a long time for a follow-up, you have to wait a long time for a sequel. Beyond Good and Evil 2 might be taking the cake in terms of how long uh, time elapses between games. I'm sure there have been cases where there are, uh, there are franchises that go MIA for decades upon decades or whatever the case may be, but Beyond Good and Evil 2, for my money, is one of those that, yeah, it's a bummer that we've had to wait this long to play the game, but hey, maybe that'll make anticipation for the game even greater. All right, lastly, I do want to talk a little bit about Neo 2's content and length, noted to be about the same as the first game. The first Neo offered a lot of content, and in an interview with GameSpot, uh, producer Fumihiko Yasuda divulged it recently took him roughly 55 hours to complete Neo 2. Noting, quote, so the number of main missions is about the same. It's lengthwise about the same as Neo 1, but when we looked at how long it took for players to complete Neo 1, it depended on the player, how good they were, how they played it, so it's hard uh, for me to say, but when I played the game this past January, it took me 55 hours. As the producer, I imagine he would be pretty decent at the game, but we'll see. Some people probably could rush through the game and beat it a lot quicker. I know it didn't take me 55 hours to beat the first Neo. I believe I got it done a little bit quicker than that, but Neo 2 is going to have a lot of content. And if you're a fan of challenging Souls-like titles, I, I hate using the term Souls-like because it really does discredit a lot of other games, but that's just kind of the terminology that's been applicable to these kinds of titles. Whatever the case may be, if you want a challenging action-oriented title, Neo 2 is definitely going to be right up your alley. And even at a full $59.99, it is going to be a game that you can sink a lot of hours into, so that's always great. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, the PlayStation 5 cooling system is more expensive than usual to avoid heating issues probably going to lead to the console being a bit more expensive but i think everybody's going to settle in at 500 dollars and that is going to improve the overall usability of the console so that's definitely good ubisoft confirms beyond good and evil 2 won't be coming out for quite a while that is a big bummer to me i don't know how you guys feel about it but for me that's one of my more anticipated games so that's always going to be a little upsetting but hopefully when the game does come out, it turns out to be rather good. And Neo 2's content and length is about the same as the first game, so that's pretty good. That means we're going to get a relatively lengthy game. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.